I wanted to start out this morning. We're starting a new series this morning. And uh, we have a really cool graphic that Pastor Austin uh, designed. It's back to school, back to faith school. Um, and so I thought I'd start it off by, uh, this morning by encouraging the Bible. It says, you know, um, encourage yourself uh, with psalms, hymns, and TV theme songs. Uh, when I woke up in the morning and my alarm gives out a warning and I don't think I'll ever make it on time. By the time I grab my books, give myself a look, I'm at the corner just in time to see the... But it's all right. Because I'm on Saved by the Bell. If the teacher pops a test, then I know I'm in a mess. And my dog ate all my homework last night. Riding low in my chair, she won't know that I'm there. If I can't, can hand it in tomorrow, it'll be all right. Because it's all right. Because I'm on Saved by the Bell. All right. I just thought that was funny um, a little bit, you know, thinking about uh, coming back to school and probably one of the greatest uh, uh, show, TV shows of all time, Saved by the Bell. Uh, I got, is A.C. Slater here, uh, a.k.a. Lance uh, Becker? Uh, I, don't, I don't see him. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, it, we got, we've got a screech. Any screechers in here? Or, uh, all right, pre- uh, we got Preppy. Where's Preppy? Zach. Zach Morris. All right. Um, Anyway, no, I, 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 we're going to be t- talking this morning. I got some school supplies um, because we're going to go to faith school. And so when you go to school, they, always, they give you a list of some things that you're going to need, right? You know, so you got your trapper keeper. You get to pick it out. Did you know that you could, that was probably one of the most five-star. Remember five-star when five-star was like the thing? It's still around, but it used to be like the thing. Um, and did you know that we have, uh, used to have to cover books? Anybody? Now they just have computers and tasks. Like, we got in trouble for not covering books. Like, you, you got detention and stuff. You had one week to go get paper bags and cover your books and duct tape. Th- th- that was torture. Wasn't that torture? I don't know why it was so hard to cover books, but I struggled with that. I, I just not. I, and then there people come with these books perfectly covered and all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about the Word this morning, though. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. But I just had a few things. Um, everybody got their notebook because we're going back to faith school today. You got your notebook? Got your notebook. Um, does it have any room left in it? Okay, good, good. Okay. Um, oh, oh, we got a we got a pencil sharpener. You know, we're gonna get we gotta make sure you have that in case you know you need to keep writing. And then also, you know, the word of God keeps you sharp. Um, bright. You got your highlighters, and we got their highlighters for the Bible. You know, there used to be a time we used to highlight our Bibles. We're gonna try to bring this back. That's why we brought back the Trapper Keeper. That's we're bringing back some of the old school in this back to face school. Okay. So some of the old school th- ways are some ways that I still have. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't want to bring this morning um, all my notebooks, but I have three ring binder or three ring spiral notebooks of notes from sermons because about the first seven years here, I just did everything in spiral notebooks. I have them up this tall and everyone has sermons in them. It's kind of cool. You know, I still got them. And it, it, it's, 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 it's awesome just to go back. This is actually a, a, a small, smaller notebook that came from when I went to Bible school. I had uh, five of these notebooks, and I had them in each class, and just super good, right? It's cool to have these things. So if you don't have a notebook, a way to take notes, then, well, somebody said it this way one time, you must not be expecting God to speak to you. Uh, we got an eraser because, you know, as we study the Word of God, you're going to find that God is able to take some terrible mistakes and fix them. As we look at faith school. Aren't you excited about that? Yeah. Oh, um, we got to make sure we're ready for creative class, right? Did you know, that, oh, art class, but did you know you're created to create? That you are, you're not just, just another number in line, but you are original. So, you know, um, I think there's some things that you need to stick on. Your mom, your father wants to stick on the fridge that you made. So don't be intimidated to make some things that nobody else has made before. Well, what is that? The Lord, make it, make it. So, got those watercolors, um, those three by five cards that we, we brought. Yeah, you could use those for scripture memory verses or whatever. I don't know. They always made us bring these. We never used them. Um, how many of you remember? It's like, you know, and then it's always like, bring the box of Kleenex. Uh, 
for the class. Uh, colored pencils, you know, the, uh, you, you're always going to need some colored pencils to mark some things up. Um, and just to write some new stories. Anybody, you know, with the Word of God in your life, you can make sure you have plenty of uh, loose leaf paper. Uh, someone's going to need to, you might even have to borrow a sheet so somebody else can be told that they can write, uh, you know, a, a new story. Uh, and that their yesterday doesn't have to be there tomorrow. Oh, I also have um, some textbooks. Um, um, actually, I have one textbook here. But it's actually 66 books. So in this book, we got 66 books. And, um, and there's a lot of teachers in here, but yet one teacher teaches it all. The Holy Spirit teaches it. There's 40 authors that wrote this book. Um, books. 40 authors and 66 books. There's Old and New Testament, how we define it. But it's really a story of humanity and our need for um, a Savior. Um, and how God made a way when there was none. So super cool to have that textbook. Um, this is kind of cool. This is like, uh, it's like, you know, you have like science and you have biology one, biology two. This is the Berean study Bible. Um, and then we have, uh, um, we have another one. Uh, this is a little different take on that. I think this is biology, but it's, yeah, it's the same book. It's science still. Um, but this is NIV uh, message parallel. Uh, that's helpful. Uh, sometimes you just got to get a little different message, you know, that's that's helpful. So we got those textbooks, you know, um, and of course we got a backpack because you know got to come prepared. Oh, got to have a computer, you know. That's important. Uh, um, you, you never know what you need to look up. I was going to bring a Strong's, but for my office, I don't use that anymore. But that was actually my gift as I went to Bible school for my parents as I graduated high school. Oh, this is really cool. This is um, this is the 66 books, but it's in chronological order. Um, so you can see. Actually, the dates that are written, this is, okay, we're going to back to school here, so oh, that's a really great, really great book. Can, kind of bring a little understanding as you read the Gospels and when they're written, uh, even though they're all accounts, when, when they're written, and the different epistles, which are New Testament books written to the church. Um, oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, oh, this is great. Is Ben Schlegel in here this morning? Okay, hey. Um, I wanted to make sure and do this. This is for you. You left your notebook, honey, at home, so um, and your Bible uh, here. Some sometimes you just got to run kids their lunch and stuff, you know, to school. Um, and that's a that has like Hebrew on the Hebrew Bible, right? Is that the Hebrew Bible? And his notepad it looks a little different, you know. Can't have just anybody's notepad, right? How many of you know you want to take notes on your notepad because sometimes just that loose leaf is not so great, right? So, and I don't know if you. I don't know, maybe you need to call mom real quick. We got about five more minutes and, and before we get started. Here we go. So um, I'm just digging deep here this morning. Oh, this is great. This is, a, this is, a, um, this is the King James. Um, really great and amplified parallel. Uh, really helpful. Uh, sometimes you just need to have a bigger picture, right? And then you kind of want to go back to like, well, King James. Uh, uh, so there we get that. Um, let's see here. What else we got in here? Oh, this is great. This is uh, the Bible that I, I was given when I was teaching um, in youth. And uh, it's an NLT. Uh, it's kind of the translation that I uh, oftentimes dislike the most. Um, when I'm trying to quote uh, King James or what I know, because it doesn't read the same. Um, oh, oh, here we go. This is good. Uh, Got to have glue, right? Because as we, as we uh, you got to have some stick to it power, um, and that word will help you with that. And then I have this other one. Oh, Lou, this is cool. What what is that? Oh, this is the Christian Standard Bible. Isn't that a nice looking Bible? Let's see whose Bible this is. Uh, mine. Actually, it's nobody's. Because uh, this is for somebody that doesn't have a Bible. They would like a very special Bible. It's a manly Bible, so if there's a guy here that would like to have a Bible, it's yet to be presented. Um, if there's anybody here, you can come on up and get it. There you go, bud. God bless you. You know, uh, man, the word is powerful. Um, it's not just a book. This morning we're going to talk about a textbook. We're starting faith school, but this morning we're going to just talk about the textbook. Because um, sometimes in, in class what we do is we get syllabus 
It, this is more college level where you learn what you're going to learn. And that's important. But what I want to address this morning um, is not so much, oh, faith and talk about faith. I want to talk about the book that brings it. I want to talk about the book that is not just, um, it's not just a book of facts. It's a living book. This is a living word. This word transcends time. Because God knew the end from the beginning. As a matter of fact, he tells us, and he tells us the end from the beginning. It's super cool, just as you look through this book, some foundational things. I want to just throw up a couple of little things that... The enemy, let me, let, me, let me go through some of these notes this morning, and because I, I ordered it where I believe, again, faith school, um, it's important that we, we go a little bit more line upon line on some stuff. So we're going to talk, and why is it so important, why is faith so important as we talk about faith? What, what is faith? You know, we're, well, faith is important, number one, because you can't get born again without it. You can't be, you can't get saved. You can't give your life to the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, 8, you can't, right? So you, it says, and then it says here, he says, for by grace you've been saved, but how, how, what's the conduit? What's the avenue? Through faith. So faith matters concerning salvation. It's the conduit. It's the vehicle. It's the avenue. And it's not of yourselves, but it's a gift of God. Isn't that cool? That even the way to get saved, it's not of yourself. The Bible tells us that, that you can't be proud. We're going to talk about this in the weeks to come. But you can't be proud of your faith. Because if you have faith, it's because it was given to you. It was something that was received. That's cool. Oh, I forgot to mention I got these highlighters. Other highlighters, you know. The, um, how many of you got the highlighters? This is one of the ones that has been used. And I know that because it's missing pieces uh, from my teeth. I'm chewing on it. Like, anybody like biting the end off of the thing and then popping it back in? Anybody? All right. Um, don't take my highlighter. It's kind of like at, at lunch, just a little trick for you kids going back to school that are in, in middle school. You have those kids that always want to take your lunch. So when you get to school and you get your hot lunch, you lick the corn dog, you lick your stuff, then no one takes your lunch. All right? Um, if you chew on your pencils, they don't want to borrow them so much. All right. <laughs> Hebrews 11.6 tells us that we can't please God without faith. You want to please the Lord? It's not your performance. It is faith. Faith does have a working, but faith pleases God. And without it, it's impossible to please him. So we need to know a little bit about it. Uh, Mark 11.24 says this, that it's by faith that we get answers. You want some answers? You need some answers? Well, faith is the avenue to get there. It's kind of like your Google. Like, you know, it's kind of like your internet where you can, if you don't have it, you can't, you can't look it up. It's kind of like having internet on your phone. You can't look it up. Hey, mom, can I, uh, you know, our, uh, one, I think Caleb doesn't have internet on his phone all the time. And he maybe wants to look up something, so he wants to borrow our phone. You know, you can't borrow somebody else's faith. Matthew chapter uh, 21, 28, you're, uh, there's, there's a time that someone else can pray for you. But there's a time you've got to graduate, all right? Um, Matthew chapter 21, verse 28, and James 1, 5 through 8 says uh, we get prayers answered. And without, without faith, we can't have our prayers answered. Wow, that's interesting. Maybe, maybe sometimes our prayers aren't answered, not because of any other reason except for faith. Well, I don't know about that. I was in faith. Well, go ahead and you don't even have this verse, but maybe we should throw up Romans chapter 3, verse 3 real quick. Romans 3, verse 3, it tells us that God is true and every man's a liar. What if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Verse 4 tells us, no. God forbid. You shouldn't even say that. It says, it says uh, not, not at all. Let God be true. And every human being a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved Right when you speak and prevail when you judge. What God has said is true whether it's worked for you or not. If it's not worked for me, it might just be that I don't understand it fully. Have you ever worked on an electronic? I'm using that electronic because that's not my expertise. It's not the place that I like to spend my time. It's not that I couldn't learn it. It's just where I don't want to spend my time. 
Um, and so I'll have to have somebody, no, I did this, I did this, and I pushed this, and it's not working. It's not working. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a statement we say a lot. It's not working. No, you're not working it. There's a difference between something not working and you not working it. Like you got to plug it in. Did you plug it in? Oh, yeah. Well, did you make sure that this cord was connected? My lawnmower uh, yesterday, I was driving. I was going to go mow down uh, my food plot. I'm like, yeah, I got this thing back. It's working. It's a kind of a uh, just a... I was like, yeah, I came out of the shop, and I'm driving, all of a sudden the thing goes, Brrr, and I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. This thing just did this, and Caleb comes around the corner, my youngest son, he goes, did it die on you too? And I'm like, yeah, did it die, I died on you? He's like, yeah, that's why I was sitting over there for a week, and I was like, oh, well, I got it started. I don't know how I got it started, but it started when I went to get on it. I put the battery charger on it, all this stuff. It was not the battery. What it was is underneath the seat, there was a fuse that no longer had a fuse. It had a wire. They, they bypassed the fuse so because it kept blowing fuses, I guess. All right? And so they had a jumper wire where it made, in a sense, a strong fuse because now it's one of those pieces was loose. And I, then I'm like, oh, looking around, trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out. And I see that this one piece is loose, and I'm like, all this time, it was just a little loose wire? Yeah, this is why we're going to faith school. Because you know what? You can be taught things you don't even understand. I don't have to understand how that safety switch in the seat, which is what it was. But you know how those, don't you hate those? Oh, anybody here, like the tractor, you get off the tractor and it shuts it off. You're like, I just needed to get safety switches, you know? It's like seatbelt. No, I'm just kidding. It's not like seatbelts. <laughs> I mean, we, as kids, we didn't really wear seatbelts. You know, I don't think they had them back in the day. And now we have them. Praise the Lord. We're probably getting better with time. All right. Um, just because you don't, it didn't work for you, it might be because something is not connected. It might be that you and I need a little bit of understanding. You got the red wire where the black wire, well, that's both hot, just so you know, typically. Unless you had somebody, you run a wire, and all they had was these other kinds, and it's wired a certain way, and you wonder why it's working, and it works for them. You don't, I'm giving you analogies that some guys and mechanics are like, yeah, I, I get it. I get it why, well, whoever had this, they needed to make it work. And the principle, because they understood wire doesn't matter about color. It's just a conductor. You can use a green one, a red one, a blue one, a purple one for a rainbow one. It doesn't really matter. It's just that you need to get the, the power, the source from there all the way to over here. And sometimes we're trying to reproduce things based on what something looks like because we don't understand the principles of it. And so we're trying to work somebody else's faith instead of working what God said, this is how it works. And you just work with what you got. You work with what you got. Thank God you don't have to have every piece perfectly together to get something to run and get it to work. That you don't have to be like at this level of faith and have be able to buy this quality of, you know, and you got to... To make it work. No, you put a little wing nut, some, put electrical tape, and you're, go, you're going again. You're mowing. You're cutting grass. Faith's working. It's important that faith works. So, again, why are we talking about faith? We're, we're going to talk about the text this morning. We're going to talk about the textbook. But here's another reason why. It's the only fight that you're called to fight. It's actually the fight that you're in so often you don't even know it. It's actually about, and it's always been about your faith. You can look at the text in the beginning, as you open up in the beginning, when you get to Genesis chapter 2 and 3, and Satan came for the word. And Jesus tells us in Mark 4 that it's always been about the word, that Satan hates truth. We're going to look at a couple of scriptures there in a moment. And then the last one is this, that this is how you have victory over the devil. This is the victory, 1 John 5, 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith is the victory for whatever you're facing in the world. Faith. It's faith. This is why we need to go back to faith school, because we've been doing some things apart from God's assistance. That's faith is what God said. It has a foundation. It has a title deed. Um, so let's go, let's, let's jump into a few, a few verses this morning. The Bible tells us that as a Christian, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that you and I are to walk by faith, not by sight. For we walk by faith, not by sight. But what's faith? So this is why we're going to faith school. Is faith um, a name it, claim it, um, where you can get rich quick scheme? 
Is faith uh, something that just is uh, uh, last case resort, throw up the Hail Mary, so to speak, maybe God will hear it, last hope thing? No. Is faith uh, something that is uh, maybe just grandma uh, can have, and you know, when you grow out of your adolescence, then you too can get faith one day? No. Is faith something uh, that mom, or, you know, uh, has, but dad, he's just not really a man of faith? No. No, faith is, uh, is it, it's, a, it's a substance. It's actually something that you and every person has been dealt a measure of. This is cool to think. God said, kind of like we were handing out these gifts. He's like, God's like, some for you, some for you, some for you. He doesn't run out either. Some for you, some for you, some for you. And you got just enough. You got enough that it can move a mountain. Like, yes, this much. A seed this big, mustard seed, can move a mountain this much. So you could say this this morning, I got enough faith. God gave me faith. God's given me faith to win the battles that I face. This is why it's important to come here from him. This is the, even the, the message. As you're sitting here this morning. You're not listening to a man, hopefully. You're listening for what is God speaking because when God speaks, faith comes. Let's keep going here. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. And so this is a scripture. This is really, the, uh, I guess, the pre- uh the premise or, or the foundation of where this came out of my heart, the Lord had been really dealing with me on this verse and in this house. Will I find faith on the earth when the Son of Man returns? Will, will the Lord find faith? It says, to tell you, he'll see this, uh, he talk, there's a story about this, this persistent woman. We talked a little bit about being persistent because faith works. And God is faithful. So keep, you know, keep asking. So many times we give up because, well, it's not working. No, you're not working it. Stay faith and patience, you will inherit. Um, and quickly, however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will God find faith on the earth when he returns? Will, will he find faith in this house? Will this church assembly, no matter who's pastoring it, because the church is not a pastor, it's a people. It's a body. And it's an assembly. And uh, the Bible tells us that, that every person here, we are members of that body. And we're contributors. And um, seasons uh, change. Uh, roles of leadership change. There are people standing in, in, or sitting in these seats this morning that are uh, part of different levels of leadership of Beyond Church. That are extremely valuable. There's possibly somebody sitting here in this room that in 20 years will be a pastor here or the pastor. Or maybe, maybe I, don't, I don't know, maybe sooner, maybe later, I don't know. But there's people, but there, there are, there's worship leaders here that are, that are, because of their foundation and holding to faith, they're singing songs that are faith songs. They're not just singing songs that are radio songs. Radio songs don't equate to faith songs. Just because somebody wrote a song and calls it worship doesn't mean that you should be singing it as truth. So will I find faith here in this church? Well, what about in your house? What about if grandma dies when you were praying? What about, what about if you deal with the storm? Will, can you, will you find faith even through a storm? Because there's something about the Word of God and building. The Bible says, if you and I have faith, if you and I, because faith is an action. Paul said that faith, you, should, you tell me you have faith, I'll show it to you by what I do. He said, you, a storm will come, but the house will stand. When you build your house, when you build your life, both houses are built, they probably look the same. One house was built in the sand. One house was built on the rock. What was the difference? Well, no one knew until a storm came. Until a storm came. So let's just keep on going here. He says, will I find faith on the earth? So I I, I think it's important that we have a grip on faith. We have an understanding. Am I saying, oh, there's all there is to know? No, I'm saying that the word of God is has to be established. This is what the enemy's fighting for. He's fighting for, to, for you and I to wonder. Wonder. Is this, 
is this really God's word? I mean, really? It's kind of ancient. It needs to get with the times, right? I mean, how does God expect? I mean, look at where it says this here. I mean, that's just too hard of a saying. Oh, we're going to look at that here in a minute this morning. It's just too hard of a saying. So what, when it's too hard, what do you do? Would you walk away? Or do you recognize, Lord, where would we go? This is the very words of life. You're going to have to establish that if you're ever going to build your life. You've got to establish this first textbook truth. This textbook is the word of God. It is holy. It is God authored yet written by men. There's one author. People say 66 books, 27, 39, New Testament, Old Testament. 40 authors, 1,600 years. Saying one message. Why was it one message? Why could 40 authors over the three continents that this book was written on, prophecy after prophecy after prophecy, it told us science 4,000, 5,000 years ago. This book, there's books that were written, there's knowledge in this book that science is just finding out today. Well, I wonder who could have wrote that. that maybe somebody that knew the end from the beginning? Absolutely. It, all of it could, could it, not one time does it contradict itself. Well, I done up, up, it's not, but look here. Uh, I think you might not understand that there's a wire under the seat. You might just be looking at those two fuses there, but there's something else that's working that you didn't know that that's what was causing it to work all the time. That you might have the, not have the full clue on what's going on. Like when Jesus said, eat my flesh, drink my blood, you're like, bro, what, what? Eat my flesh, drink my blood. I don't know. That's a hard saying. That's a little bit too much for me. But just a few years later, you sit at the Last Supper with his disciples. He said, this is a a covenant. This is my body that's broken for you. And then all of a sudden, boom, Jesus on the cross, beaten. Whoa, Isaiah, all of a sudden, whoa, you're telling me that I might not have seen it all just yet at the time when I heard it? And instead of me denying the fact and the truth and the authenticity of this written by God, authored by God who, who, that maybe I just have something to learn. Maybe, maybe God is just, just a little bit smarter than me. Maybe I need to invite the teacher in when I open the textbook. And if I, and, and, and if I don't understand that, this is where I, I don't, I say, Lord, I'm asking you to show me. And my, just like my teacher would say this, you move on to the answers that you know. If you look at, uh, Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> this is later on in the, in the in series. It says in Psalms, it says that God reveals light to us. I think it's Psalms 39.3. Uh, um, let, me, let, me, let me do a little Google in here. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I, I've heard this the other, uh, the other day about how God, through light, leads us to light. Through light, like light brings more light. Bro. See, this is part of the body. That's Workman, Adam Workman running the controls behind the knobs. I'm thankful for that. What a, that's stinking awesome. And you were crushing it when you were like, I'm like, Romans 3, 3. And then I was like, boom, there it was. And then I was like, well, if we're going to throw a 4 on him, it might be a minute. And he's like, 4. Anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> Look at this right here. It says, for with, uh, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light, guess what we see? More light. So if you want light, what do you need to do? The Bible says in uh, Psalms 119.105 that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Stick with the light of the word. So, you, where, so here's what I'm saying is stick with what you know. So when you stay with what you know, what happens is, is more light comes. I can't get to calculus without first taking geometry or, excuse me, algebra. I can't climb that mountain if I don't know a plus B squared equals C squared. If I don't have that formula down, calculus, and so many times we're jumping to calculus. Hello? 
I want to know about this, but you don't even know about this. You left what you didn't know, to, and now you're standing around what you don't know, and the very thing that you once held true is now in question because you're standing around darkness, and the, where you, when you stand around darkness, things get darker. But if you'll stay with the light, guess what will happen? You'll, more light. You'll graduate, so to speak. We're going to celebrate kindergarten graduation and then second grade graduation. I don't know why we celebrate all these graduations. And then fifth grade graduation because we've got to celebrate something. But you can celebrate you and I going from one level to the next and we can be changed from brightness to brightness. Or you could say it as we behold the word, we're changed from one degree of brightness or glory to the next. Wow. That's cool. So stay with the light, and then guess what? You'll get to keep walking in the light. And you'll be able to continue on the path that God had for you, and you can say with confidence, I, you, Lord, will find faith in this house, in my house, in my family when you return. Because I'm sticking with the light. And in that light, you're going to lead me to more light. That's good. And we're not very far in notes. But this is okay. Is this okay? Because we got to get some things down. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 through 17. You, you know, Romans 10, 9 and 10, is a, we call it the Romans road, right? Um, uh, I don't know who really coined that. I think uh, Baptist uh, coined that the Romans road. It's a, how to lead people in the salvation prayer. Like Roman, not, it's part of the Romans road. It's not all of the Romans road. Um, in other words, in Rome, Romans, this book that was written to the Romans, is all about taking a Gentile or a lost people and, and showing them who Christ is. So I, I think sometimes this book right here, you know, people say, oh, if you want to, when you just get born again, you need to read John because that's, John is all about the love of God. It's the picture of Jesus. Absolutely. That's an important book. But, but this book is written to an unbelieving, very carnal people. And it shows them, in a sense, how to appropriate Christ. So it's almost even before John. You know, it's almost a book that would prove to you your need for a Savior. So this is like Rome, like in Athens, like they would sit and they would philosoph philosophy and talk and there would be a discussion. So this is, it's, yet at the same time, this is not enticing words with man's wisdom. This word... Because the word of God is alive and powerful, Hebrews 4.12, sharper than any two-edged two -edged sword. This word, although it can argue with, with uh, uh, erate, um, although it can argue, in other words, it can, it, can, it can cause this to be changed. It has the power to transform, not just conform, not just to bend your mind. Not just to make it, but to literally transform it. So, and anyway, so Romans chapter 10, 14 through 17, is right, right after where, you know, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus the Lord, you'll be saved. And then it begins to talk about how are they going to hear. So let's just read this. How then shall I call on him whom they've not believed? So many times we read this, or we heard this scripture, and we, we say it with missionaries. We, we use this passage right here. With evangelists. You know, like, people need to get born again. Well, this is about salvation, not just eternal destination. Say that again. This passage is about salvation, not just your eternal destination. All the promises of God are yes and amen. But how is someone going to call on the, that promise or on him? And whom they have not believed, but how are they going to believe on him and whom they've not heard? How can you believe what you haven't heard? You can't. How can you believe about God's faithfulness to provide for you if you've not heard it? You can't. How can you believe about healing if you've not heard it? How can you believe God's ability to transform your mind and redeem you from a pit if you've not heard it? How can you believe this is about salvation? How can you believe if you haven't heard? You can't. 
So this is the, why it's so important to have a preacher. To have, and you to be a preacher. Because people don't know. We, we're not to stay at just infant level. We're to grow up spiritually. We're to grow kindergarten and first grade. And we're to, be, we're gonna, we're to grow through adolescence. And we're, gonna, we're to grow into adults where we're now looking after others. Spiritually speaking, not just naturally. We do it so just automatically. Like we go, oh, he's five years old. Oh, you put him in kindergarten this year? No, I think we're going to start him next year. Oh, so you, you know that there's an advancement. Like just naturally, we just do this. We, we know, what are you doing? Are you, are you going to go to work? Are you going to go to college? What are you doing? There's an advancement. But yet, there's an advancement in the things of God. And we're to grow. How do you and I grow? We hear. We learn. We're taught. And from faith to faith. And then there's an outworking of what? Our salvation. Through fear and trembling. In other words, wow, this is, this is truth. I hold this as holy. You remember the Ark of the Covenant? I don't, the, the, you might not understand. We're not taking time to go there. But, but you remember when the, the, the oxen stumbled and one of them reached out and tried to grab the cart to stable the cart? And he dropped dead. How can, I mean, really, how could God do that? All he was trying to do was help the ark. We would think that, wouldn't we? When we don't hold the things of God as holy and what he said is what he said. Whether you deem in the moment right or not. Because so many times we deem in the moment right or not. So then you have to ask yourself, who's Lord? Anyway, he said, how are they going to hear? How are they going to believe if they haven't heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? Next verse. And how should they preach unless they're sent? Did you know God sends people? You know kids are being sent? You know people are being sent? In other words, they're God, part of God's plan on the earth. You're part of God's plan on the earth. Just hope I got the message that I'm supposed to. Oh, I forgot that at home. Shoot. You mean you drove all that way? Have you ever done that? Like, you went all that way and you forgot the one thing that they needed. That's so frustrating. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news or the gospel of peace. Let, let's think about the gospel of peace for a moment. Let's, go to, in our, let's just go to Luke chapter 4, 17 through 18. Now the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus is saying this as he opens the book of Isaiah in the temple. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he's anointing me to preach the gospel. So that means, what's the gospel? To set captives free? To, to preach recovery of sight to the blind? Oppressed? Deliverance? The year of the Lord? It's more than an eternal destination. Stay in here. How beautiful are the feet of those that bring the gospel of peace or the gospel of wholeness, completeness. The, the salvation message is one of wholeness. Oh, there's some stuff that uh, I, I, last night I, I went to bed. I was like, Lord, teach me tonight. Teach me. And I, I, I saw some stuff in the middle of the night, like overnight, like over and over and over. I was like, okay, Lord, I, I, I'm not getting up at the moment. <laughs> but you keep teaching me again. Show me it again. Show me it again. Show me it again. Just about the goodness of God. It, it, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just amazing. It, we're going to talk about this in the weeks to come, but how, when God, how God reveals himself, he reveals himself as a word, always. This is how God reveals himself. God revealing himself to you and me today, he's revealing himself through his word. And when he reveals himself, he reveals who he is, which is his goodness, his glory. His goodness and glory in your and my life is revealed or given to me through a word. Salvation, help, comes through a word. Everything comes through a word. And he shows it when they're like, Lord, Elijah's struggling. And he's like, show me, Lord. Show me your face. Show me who you are. He said, get out on the side of the mountain. I'm going to come right by you. And there was, a mount, or there was a fire. There was an earthquake. There was a great wind. And then there was a still, small voice. God was in the voice. God was in the whisper. God is in the word. 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 If God is in the word and you need something to change, if you need some help, what do you need? You need a word. You need his word. 
All right, let's keep going here. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the glad tidings, or the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not obeyed, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Did you know just because this is the word of God, everyone's not going to believe it? Did you know that's up to you? You can, you can go to school this year, and you can go to biology one, and you can be like, that's not how the circular system works. Respiratory, presbytery. <laughs> More like boron. All right. There was a TV show one time called Billy Madison that I had seen, and he, it was not good. <laughs> and what I found is you don't read that. Or you don't watch that now that I know in high school. Anyway, praise the Lord. Going back to school. All right. God. Encourage yourself with psalms, hymns, and TV show songs. I mean, spiritual song. All right. Um, thank you, Lord. So, but who, they have not all believed. That's, on, that's up to you. This is up to you. Uh, and we're going to give a little bit of evidence of the textbook here in just a moment. But, you know, um, this, this book is not to be proved here, and it's not received here. These words are spirit, John 6, 63, and life right here. So where, do, where is this book received? Is it understood here? It's understood here. Let's keep going here. It says, uh, verse 17, because faith comes... But faith comes by hearing and hearing God's word. So that's how faith comes. As we're talking about faith, faith comes by hearing the word. Faith is the victory. Faith is the, faith is the fight that you're fighting. This is the, faith is how you please the Lord. Faith is how you appropriate all of the salvation, every promise. Faith is about your prayers being answered. And faith comes by hearing the word. So what do you think the enemy would be after? The word. The word, let's look at here in Scripture. Let's look here. Mark chapter 4, 13 through 15. Now, this parable of the sower is also found in Matthew 13, verse 18 through 23. It's also found in Luke chapter 9, or excuse me, chapter 8, verses 11 through 15. But Mark 4, 13 through 15 says this. Then Jesus said to them, If you do not understand this parable... How are you going to understand everything or any word from here? Any parable. He said, next verse, the farmer sows the word. So he's explaining the parable to his disciples. He already talked, talked about it. He said, if you don't understand this, the farmer sows the word. So what is the seed that's being sown? The word. The word is the seed. Somebody say, this is the seed. So that's powerful. Seed is incredible. It creates crazy looking fruits that come from the Middle East that taste like cantaloupe and honeydew mixed. And it looks like a squash. And I had one just the other day. What are those called? Anybody? Gajari. Gajari. I don't know if I said that right. I got a Gajari. You know what it came from? A seed that costs like a, bun a bunch of money for one little seed. And in that little seed was something pretty spectacular. In this seed is some stuff that's pretty spectacular. And the farmer sows the word. God's wanting to grow you and grow some things in us. You know who the Holy Spirit's sowing the word. And guess what? Next verse. But Satan's coming after the word. Some people are like the seed along the path where the word is sown. And as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that's sown in them. Satan wants, he comes and takes away the word that's sown. That's what he wants. He wants, the, he wants your word. Somebody say, you're not getting my word. You're not getting my word. You got you to, gotta, oh, that's my word. That's my word. When you, when you hear, it's not your word because you don't even have your pencil. You don't, have a, you don't have a word. You can't even remember, what did I need? Three gallons of milk? No, evaporated milk. No, you, when you went to the store, and did your wife texts you, you walk out the door and you forget your list. You don't have your word. 
You don't have a pencil. You don't have a highlighter. You don't have, you don't have a word. Well, I'm hiding God's word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay, well, what's your word then? Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, where's that even found? I don't know. So, Psalms, let me help you out. What we're talking about, let's just be real. Let's, let's just be real here. What we're talking about, you're like, oh, don't, don't hate on me like that. I'm not hating on you. We're talking about honor. We're talking about honor. And what you treat as holy, you get some holy things. The Bible says, that, talking about a prophet, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, he receives a prophet reward. Did you know that Jesus, because of how he was received, couldn't do certain things? So if we don't receive the word, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word where was God. And if you jump down to verse 14, it says, and the word became flesh, and he dwelt among us. So if I don't handle this as holy, then I, I'm not going to receive that which is the able to separate me or make me holy. So holiness is a separation. How many times do you just need some separation from some things in your life? Like you are not strong enough to separate yourself from some of the stuff. Actually, matter of fact, Jesus said it kind of like this. Apart from him, I can do nothing. So maybe we're not near as strong as much. And maybe there's a whole lot more mercy and kindness of God that we are, have been using. And we didn't realize that we've, oh, I just found that pencil on the floor. I've been using it this whole time. Oh, that's your pencil? <laughs> like, in other words, we've been using things that doesn't even, it, we didn't even realize. Let's keep going here. So you got a, you got a word? Where's it written? Where's your notes? Where's your review? I'm not talking. When you come to hear, are you coming to hear a preacher? Or are you coming to hear what's preached? You're hearing the Word of God. And what's being spoken is 500 messages right now by the Holy Spirit. And He's bringing correction and conviction and showing us how we're wrong. And He's not... It, it, the cool thing is he's, he's such a great shepherd. The rod, we were talking about this just the other night, last night, I think it was. The rod is not meant for the sheep. The staff is. The rod is meant for the wolves. But the staff, when the sheep wants to go its own way and it's got that hook around it, sometimes that hurts. Because that sheep is a rebellious little sheep. All right, let's keep going here. We don't want to get off. So, um, all right, I don't even, I got to look at the time. I'm going to start getting timers up here. Teacher timers, you know, like little thing. Um, John 8, 44. I love this. This is in the New Living Translation. It says this, for you, he's talking to, to, to these Pharisees, you are, of your, you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. I love this right here. This is what's highlighted in what we're talking about. He has always hated the truth. Well, God's word is truth. I mean, you can see, you just do a Google, God's word is truth. Scripture, you'll find, it says it over and over and over. Lord, sanctify them by, the, by truth. My word is truth. Thy word is truth. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. So what does he do? He doesn't speak truth. He lies. He lies. It is, it, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So uh, Satan, because faith comes, faith is what we need for so many things. Faith comes by hearing the word. Satan's coming after the word, Mark 4. Why? Because G, or Jesus knows that that word is going to produce in you, just like a seed, what you and I need. Satan also knows that. He wants to steal that. He hates truth. And so what does he replace truth with? A lie. Sometimes we don't even realize. I remember watching, I don't know how I'm bringing up all these movies. There was this movie called Bloodsport. Okay? And it was uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Right? He was like, Mr. back in high school, I was like, man, he's so buff. And he could fight and all this stuff. It was really cool. But I guess he was a ballerina, come to find out. Um, anyway. There was this moment in the movie where... This, this, they're, they're at a bar, and this, and I'm sorry I'm even talking about this in church, but here we are. Um, he, this, this guy is hitting on or, or being mean to this girl, and he comes over there, and he sees that she's in trouble, and he's like, hey, leave her alone. And uh, 
It's about to get Western, okay? About to, the fight's about to break out. And he said, I'll tell you what. If I grab that coin in your hand, you got to leave her alone. So he has the coin in his hand. And so he grabs the coin out of the guy's hand. And the guy, he's like, you didn't get the coin. He's, so he proceeds to kind of ridicule the girl. And he goes, check your hand. And the silver coin or the gold coin or whatever it was had been swapped out for a different coin. And he goes, got the coin. He, re- he not only took the coin, he replaced the coin, and the guy thought he still had the coin. I'm just saying, sometimes we got the seed, and then another word comes, and then we think we still got the seed, but the reality is the seed has been put into question, and we no longer hold the seed, we hold a lie. So where am I holding a lie where I need to check the coin? I need to check what I hold with the word. Because Satan wants to replace what God gives you. He wants to come with a second word. This is how he works. You can see this in Genesis chapter 2, 3. When when Satan's in the garden, he comes and he questions the word and he replaces the word and he speaks his native language lying. Which a lie isn't a very good lie if it doesn't have quite a bit of truth in it. You know, it's got to be believable. You know, some teenagers are really good at telling some believable lies. You know, where were you last night? Well, I was home. Well, well, where, when were you home? Like, it's, all, it's all this whole big, oh yeah, it's believable until you have the proof. This is the proof. And so let's, let's um, because I don't, we're not having, we're going to have to pick up here later. Um, so let's just say this. Faith must have a foundation. Faith has to have a foundation. And, and that's why this is being attacked. That's why not only this is being attacked, it's authority, it's authenticity, as the internet and people throw different things out. And I mean, shoot, AI's writing things that, to attack people that has everybody's greatest sermonette and song and everything that you've heard, but this hasn't changed. This hasn't changed. That's, what, that's what's amazing. You, things are changing all the time. AI and the internet's writing all kinds of things. You don't know what to believe anymore, but here's what you can go back to. You can go back to the light of the word, and in light, he can lead you to more light. This is where we need to be right now. We don't need another opinion about something going on politically. We don't need somebody say, oh, look, AI proved, p- painted this picture of Kamala or Trump or blah, blah, blah. That was staged. That's a coup. This is blah, 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 blah. This right here, before we ever had any of that, this has remained, it's remained, it's remained. You might have one at your house that is grandma's that came from early 1800s. I don't know. Anybody got a family Bible in here? Like old family Bible? It's like one of those big buggers, you know? Like, I'm talking like Little House on the Prairie, on the mantle kind of Bibles. Powerful. I still have the, this book is the number one book sold in the world. Every year. It's also the number one book stolen. Interesting. Because people don't believe taking a Bible is stealing because they, they, they believe this is God's word for them. So it's taken all the time. So that we just put them out everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And you, if your Bible's stolen, you're kind of more like, awesome, they got it. <laughs> the devil is a loser. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So the Bible tells us in John 17, 17, that, that we, can, we are sanctified or set apart by truth, and God's word is truth. When we talk about God's word being truth, I'm not talking about true like you ate a Pop-Tart this morning. Okay? Anybody eat a Pop-Tart this morning? Anybody here? No Pop-Tarts? Hey, oh, we got a Pop-Tart. Yeah, look it. Okay, so you ate a Pop-Tart this morning. That's truth. But that's not what this is. This is truth. Truth as in the level. If you ever heard somebody say that that arrow runs true, or a level that wall runs true, or that string runs true. It is the baseline for everything. 
This word is truth. It is the baseline for everything. It's the baseline. It tells us the end from the beginning. It's the, it, it tells us about, it, it's, it's crazy, amazing. It talks about um, uh, how, how you think affects your health. Science is figuring this out. But yet, this is written a long time ago. It, it tells us about, in Job, it talks about how there's pathways for light. But do you know what the light's pathways? Wait a minute. There's pathways to light? Yeah, science figured that out. Called cell phones and now FaceTime and lots of other things that we have no idea about. The military does. Light has pathways? Yeah, you can break light. You ever seen a prism? And you can break light in different spectrums and frequencies and pathways. And it's so specific that I can be from this side in Alma, Arkansas, and I could talk to someone in Hong Kong in a crowd of a million people with the beam of such specific light, it hits their phone. That's wild. And yet, do you know the pathway? We're starting to figure it out. Science is only proving the Bible. Or we could say it this way, the Bible is proving science. Because this is the baseline. This is the baseline. This is the truth. This is the plumb line. This is the plumb line. So let's, let's go here um, uh, real, real quick. I, I, I want us, you to see this. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 23. This is, uh, there was a prophet, Isaiah, uh, hurling out a challenge to those who were ser- serving heathen gods. You know, you kind of had this problem. We still have this problem. People serving other gods. God that's not God. And here's what he says to them. He said, if, if, if this God that you're serving is God, well, why don't you have this God, your, your golden calf, your camel, your Aphrodites, why don't you have your God tell us what's to come after this? Why don't you have your God that we might know that they are gods, do good or do harm, that we may be dismayed or terrified. Tell your God to tell us what's going to happen tomorrow. Better just tomorrow, let alone 2,000 years from now. Tell just, just anything, just one thing. You know what? Those gods couldn't do it. And then Isaiah comes back, and here he is in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. It says this, the Lord saying, I make known. He makes it known. The end from the beginning. This is the only book that has prophecy that's accurate. To the degree that it's not even mathematically possible to calculate how how accurate or how the, the law of probability of how many prophecies it holds and how many have come true. God is the one who's declared the end from the beginning. That's why he can prophesy. He already knows the end from the beginning. And he wrote it for us. And I declare it. I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is still to come. And you know what? Some of these prophecies have been fulfilled. The other ones are being fulfilled right before our eyes, even in the last few years. And yet there's some that are still coming, and just as the other thousands of prophecies have been fulfilled, thousands, did I say thousands? Thousands of prophecies have been fulfilled. The, the latter 500 or 400 and something that we still know, that we are, are, they're coming to pass. And Jesus is soon in coming. And will I find faith on the earth when I return? Here, that's a prophecy right there. I'm returning. Guess what? He's returning. And you know what? The other thing he'll be looking for? Faith. And he's going to find it here. And he's going to find it here. And he's going to find it in our homes. He said, I say my purpose will stand and I'll do what I please. His, he, from, the end, from the beginning to the end, he declares the end from the beginning. I love that. I love that. So I wanted to um, just... Uh, I kind of I kind of hit around on John chapter six about how so many times the people of uh, of God struggled. People were following. Let's just let me give you the, the, this picture here, and then I want to put up the uh, other slide, and then we'll close. Um, in John chapter six, 
22 through 69. We're not reading all those verses, okay? But 22 through 69, John 6, 22 through 69. But your pencil can write that down, and you can go look at it yourself. Because this is called homework, because we're going to faith school. So John chapter 6, 22 through 69, there's a crowd and this crowd um, was waiting for Jesus, but when it got light, they're like, oh, Jesus isn't here. And they're looking for him, and they realize that he went across the lake. And so they're like, oh, he's, we got to go find him. So they go around the lake, and they find Jesus, and they're like, hey, how did you get across there? The boat was still here. We thought you'd be here. Well, Jesus walked across the water right before the verses before. He talks about Jesus walking across the water. Kind of cool. And they're like, oh, okay, wow, he seems like you could be God. But I don't know, because you walk across the water. Nobody else? Anybody walk across the water here today? No? Okay. But, and, he, and then and the Lord's like, uh, so you're following me. You came all the way to the other side of this big sea. Um, you walked a long journey, not because you thought I was God, though. You walked around this lake because I fed you yesterday. So you're looking for some more food. You're looking for some more what I can do for you. And there's a many followers of God that are doing and living a life for based on what God can do for them. They don't graduate to the, Lord, I, I'm yours. What can I do for you? Serving. When I, even I don't understand. And so he goes on, he talking, to, talking to him, and, and we're going to just jump uh, all the way down here. Uh, let's just, i got a few highlights. Verse 30 says, uh, hey, will you give us a sign? He says, what sign? Uh, they said, what sign will you perform so that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? So th- they're looking for a sign. The Bible tells us that evil generation seeks a sign. Prove to me. Prove to me. Prove to me that this. The Bible says without faith it's impossible. But you Proof. No, not proof. But we can show you that this is God's word. We'll look at that here in a moment. Prove to me. Show me a sign. And he says, our fathers ate manna in the wilderness as it is written. That's verse 31. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, that was not Moses who gave you the bread from uh, from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread uh, of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And so he begins to talk about this bread and Moses, they gave us bread. No, that wasn't Moses, that was God. Matter of fact, God's given you me. And I'm the true bread and I'm the true life. Matter of fact, he goes on to say, unless you eat my flesh and you drink my blood, you can't inherit the kingdom of heaven. And we'll jump down to that verse. It's all the way down here. Um, uh, Verse 56. Whoever eats my flesh drinks my blood in me and I in him, just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father. So also the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that comes down from heaven. Unlike your fathers who ate manna and died, the one who eats this bread will live forever. And Jesus said this while the teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. On hearing it, many of his disciples said this. This is a difficult teaching. I don't think we can accept this. Who can accept this? Can you really believe that? Can you really receive that? I know more than that, is what they're saying. This is what they're saying. It's not working. This lawnmower is broke. It's not working. This, this lawnmower doesn't work. No, 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 no. There's something you don't know that makes it work. And if you'll hang around, it'll be revealed to you. But the only way you would hang around is that you know and settle in your heart, because these words are spirit and life, that this is God's word. It's God's word to me. And he goes on to says this. He says, uh, aware that his disciples, these were his disciples. They were grumbling about his teaching. This is verse 61. Jesus asked them, does this offend you? Does this offend you? When you hear, I'll tell you this. If you can receive part of this and not the other part of this. So you could talk about forgiveness. Because that's a hard one sometimes. You could talk about money, because that's a hard one sometimes. You could talk about, I don't know, what you do with your body, because that's a hard one sometimes. Your thoughts, because that's a hard one sometimes. Everyone has something they, they, they when, when Pastor 
starts to talk, or wherever it is, they change the channel, so to speak, in their mind, or they go, wah, 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 I don't want to hear that. This is too hard to receive. You know what happens when things are too hard to receive? It's just a matter of time before you walk away. Or you come under and you do like the disciples did, the 12. He says, he says, does this offend you? Then what will happen if you see that the Son of Man ascends to where he was before? He said, what I just said is offending you? Is this offending you? But So tell me what's going to happen when you see that what I just told you is absolutely true. What, what I told you about forgiving. When I told you about many will call, say to me, Lord, Lord, but who... But, but we did this in your name. But he said, I don't even know you because I don't lead your life. You lead your life. You just come for the bread. You just come for what I can do for you. You're not, you're not surrendered to me. Oh, that's hard to receive this. Hard to receive that. Hard to receive that. Well, you say the law says this. Well, I say this. Well, that was under the law. That was this. Well, so we don't do that now because this is the law. We don't give. We don't tithe. We don't do this. We do, like, we, I, I, stepping on some toes here. We're not doing that. Well, what's, so ha- what's going to happen when you see that what Jesus said the whole time was true? What, what's going to happen when you see that the, the Son of Man who's standing before you, Jesus, is raised up to be with His Father in heaven? What's going to happen then? Your eyes are going to be filled with tears. That's what's going to happen. You're going to wish you could get back what was given to you, but you didn't honor it. Just like the birthright of Esau. This right here is the blessing. This right here, the word of God is how he gets every good thing to you and me. But when we don't appropriate it or we don't receive it and cherish it and we, get, we let it go for a bowl of beans, we'll wish we could get it back. We'll seek for it with tears and yet we won't be able to get it back. Jesus is coming. Do we know that? Or have we just heard, have we fallen into that time? Oh, they say that, they've been saying that for years. Where's the sign of his coming? Show us a sign. It kind of sounds like this passage here. But instead, there's some people that stuck with Jesus and stuck with the word. And it says this, uh, the spirit, it goes on to say this. It says, the spirit gives life, verse 63, the flesh profits nothing. The words I've spoken to you, they are spirit and life. However, some of you do not believe. Then Jesus said to them, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has granted to him. From that time on, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Hey, are you going to leave too? Are you going to leave too? Are you not going to find faith in your house either? What did he say? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom, to whom, to where, where will we go? To whom shall we go? You have the very words of life. If this book, this holy Bible, you can't say that, check yourself today. Check why you're here. Check if you're here just for another chicken nugget or a loaf that Jesus is handing out. Some accuracy, this will be up on our website under resources. I want you to just see a couple little clips on our resource page. You, this is, um, go ahead and go to page four on this. I just want you to, I'll hit that first. So, uh, on our resource page, just right here, there's 365 prophecies just of Christ. that talks about his coming and how he came and what he fulfilled. 365 just of Christ. There's more than that. But 360, one for every day of prophecies. You can see where it's prophecy and fulfillment. And in the resources page, it's super fun. You can click on it. You can click on what it said. And then you can click on where it's fulfilled. Then you can go, here's what you can do. You can go, Wow. And then as you're doodling, wow, you can flip it upside down and you can say, Mom. (laughs) 
And there, there, there's a book that was written, it's proven the Bible, it's talking about science. It's called Science Speaks. And he just took just a few prophecies and did the math equation. He's a scientist. Um, and he talked about how if you just take this many of the prophecies, it was just, I think it was like 12 prophecies. And he said it would be the equivalent of the sun. Not Texas, but the sun. Anyway, it's called Science Speak. It's by uh, Dr. Stoner. Okay, not, not Stoner, but I know that's what I'm like. That's terrible. Um, but it's called Science Speaks, and he talks about just, just prophecies. And he just, I think, actually it's eight prophecies of, of not Jesus, but cities. He just takes cities that were prophesied the doom of that city and how in Ty, uh, Tyre, that city called Tyre, it will be people will fish over you because you didn't heed the word of the Lord. People will cast their nets and catch fish where you now stand. And that city's gone, and it's a great fishing ground. Now, wow, that's one prophecy. Who's going who's gonna to prophesy that in 300 years you're going to be gone? Who's going to prophesy the building of this city and the tearing down? And your, and your son, will, your firstborn will die when you start, and your youngest born will die when you're finished. Who's going to pro- that far? Who's going to prophesy? He, there's eight cities. He talks about these eight things, and it would be the equivalent if you took a silver dollar and you filled the sun with silver dollars and you painted one of them red and you put it and you said, all right, buddy, here's the odds of just those coming to pass with that accuracy. Even dates are said on these prophecies. And you pick that out. That's only eight. Here's 365 of Jesus' fulfilled prophecies. You can't do the math. Why? Why can you not do the math? Because God is the one who authored this. He is the author of this book. He's the author of this textbook. And this book will tell you the end from the beginning. This book was true back then, and it's true, and we're still finding out how true it is. Discovery, archaeology is still discovering what the Bible said existed. This is God's Word, and I can trust His Word. You can trust His Word. Here's some prophecies. Look at this next. Go back up to the beginning of chapter uh, 1. It talks about just different things that the Bible says. Look at this one. I love this one right here. Uh, Light is in motion. Job 38, that's the fourth one down. Light is in motion. Job 38, 19 through 20. We always thought light just existed. But now science sees that it's in motion. In that Job, it talks about light has a path. And it's going. And it's always moving. How does... Well, God knew that. God knew that. Look at the next one. How about this one? This this used to be, this is only a couple hundred years old, not maybe 50, 150 years old, maybe less than that. George Washington was bled to death. Do you know that? Our first president of the United States, he was bled to death because he was sick. So when you were sick, they thought, well, their blood is unhealthy. We need to get that unhealthy blood out of them. But the Bible says that life's in the blood. Science realizes what you need is a blood transfusion, not to get rid of the blood. They need the healthy blood. Life's in the blood. They did, they're just they're figuring these things out. Next verse, or not verse, but another page. Some, just some more pictures here. For century, like this is super cool. Talking about how, did you know how water works? So the rains come down and they go back up to heaven. Like I thought that was maybe just poetry. They're going to come down. no. This is science. It's like, oh, wait, evaporation, wow, accumulation, so, so wait, saturation, acu- like precipitation. It's like, whoa. It's all found right here. You can find it chronologically. You can find it written by this. You can, maybe you need to understand it a little more amplified. You can, but I don't know. Hopefully you have a textbook. But more important even than, not more important, but just as important as your textbook because there's written words there's a written word of God right there but there's also spoken word of God not just the word of God that comes out of your mouth but what what he speaks to you and this is where faith finds finds its foundation every all faith has a foundation it's what God has said and the cool thing is his children know his voice this is the word is true. His children know his voice, and the strangers they don't follow. So you could say this, I know God's voice, and he speaks to me. And because he speaks to me, I have a notebook. When I open up his word, and light's coming, 
and I pick up my pencil in my highlighter and I fill the page with things that God desires to impart to me. The Bible calls it rhema, spoken word, faith. You can't have faith for what you haven't heard. You can have make-believe. And where you have make-believe, this is where people get faith failures. But not one word shall go forth from my mouth and not accomplish what it was set forth to do. That's God's word, not mine. If something isn't working, it might not be him. This is rest assured it's not him. It might be that I need a little bit more understanding. It might need be that I need to go back to the light that I have and let God take me from this light to the next light to the next light so that I'm changed. In Jesus' name. All right, let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for hanging with me on this opening to a series talking about a textbook. Again, um, this uh, the, 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 the article, there was another page on there too, but that 365 prophecies, it's going to be on our resources page on our website. Uh, I think it will be an awesome tool to be able to just look at and say, wow, that's so cool. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. And here's what you can say. Here's what you can say. I can trust this. I can trust this. Now more than ever, what you hear is no, there's not trust. There's not trust in government. There's not trust in integrity. There's not trust. You can trust this. You can build your life. We need, to, we need to keep building, church. We need to keep building. We need to occupy until he comes. We need to keep building. The church needs to keep building and growing and being stronger and occupying and expanding its borders. We're not to be in a, in, in a hut barely when he comes, barely getting by street. Uh, no, we're to occupy, we're to expand, we're to build, and we're to build upon what doesn't change, is never going to change, and he's watching over to perform it. But we're going to have to declare his word as so if I'm ever going to have in my heart faith. I say go, and he goes, and he, I say come, and he comes. I'm talking about the centurion. I too am one under authority. Jesus said, I've not seen faith. Authority. This is authority. This has, carries weight. This is truth. When I, that's established in my life. Right here. Right here. There's a flow from heaven. It's for you. Amen. Father, thank you for your word this morning. We just lift our hands to you just to, uh, as just a so sign of honor to you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for illuminating. Thank you that you are the greatest teacher, that you do not mind questions. You bring answers to questions. You bring light and eradicate darkness. We thank you for that. You're a great teacher. We thank you that you're you're ministering and teaching and, and changing us as we behold your word uh, and as we go through uh, this we thank you that it would be pleasing to you Lord that our lives would be pleasing to you that you would find faith here you'd find faith in us and we just say with our, with our mouths Lord we trust you we trust your word you're faithful in Jesus name Amen, amen, amen. You know, the Bible says, before we leave today, if, if you don't know where you spend eternity, there's one way you can know. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, the Bible says you'd be saved. That simple. If you've never done that and you're here today, you've never given your life to Jesus, you don't know where if heaven would be your home if you were to die today. Right now, before you leave, let's make sure of that. Right, right here, head bowed, eye closed. I'll count to three. You can really lift your hand if that's you. If you don't know, or you got to get right with the Lord, you know it, you came to church this morning, said, i got to give my life to Jesus or give it back to Jesus. If that's you, on the count of three, I want you just to raise your hand, and then I'm going to ask you to come down front. So one, 
Would you build up a little bit of uh, guts here? Two. Three. Hand up if that's you. Let me pray with you. Have you come down front. Thank you, Lord. Any hands? Be bold about it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I don't see any hands, but we're just going to do this online. You might be watching from home uh, this morning. I'll just lead you in a prayer. It's super simple. It's just from your heart. You just cry out to the Lord. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. And so we're just going to call upon, upon Him today. I'll lead you in that prayer. Just say this after me. Just say, Father, I call out to you today. Save me from my sins. I need you. Heal my heart. Heal my past. I surrender my life to you. I believe you are the answer. You are Jesus, God's son, who paid the price for me. Do what you can do in my life. Start today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. You can let us know in the comments. And God bless you guys. We'll see you guys Wednesday night. Oh, yeah. We also have notebooks out in the lobby, on the tables, and pencils if you need them. You know, they'll be here throughout the series. Notebooks and pencils.